The brain is growing and changing so much, particularly in the early years. If we just take a snapshot of the child's brain at one point in time, we don't get a full picture of how the brain is growing. In longitudinal studies, we study the same child across time to track how their brain is maturing. We started the Autism Phenome Project in 2006, and we now have brain scans from some of these children from age two to three all the way up to age 12. In one of the papers, we have over 1,000 MRI scans in over 400 children, which is really unheard of. Our data is also unique because we try to include as many children as possible across all portions of the autism spectrum. So we include children with intellectual disability, as well as a larger number of girls who are really sorely understudied in research. In males, we do not see uh, a pattern that's really consistent with uh, a normalization or regression of brain sizes. And that really larger brain size might be limited to a small subset, a relatively small subset of individuals with autism. If they do have that enlarged brain size, it persists through childhood. We believe that autism with disproportionately large brain size is important to investigate because we believe that it's likely they are understudied in older samples of autism in research. And they are a potential subgroup with fewer IQ gains, which might make it harder for them to meet the requirements of research. For example, in MRIs, you need to, be, you need to hold still. And, and so they just might be underrepresented. Using a type of MRI scan known as diffusion weighted imaging, we found that the structural connections in the brain in young autistic children develop slower across early childhood. And this helps to explain when alterations observed in older children with autism first emerge in the condition. In this study, we found that autistic children who increase or decrease in their autism symptoms with age experience either faster or slower white matter development. So this indicates that the development of structural connections in the brain are an important marker for autism symptom progression. So collectively, I believe these studies are so important because they directly address some of the most preeminent theories we have in autism research. And I do believe they get us closer to a point where we can use our understanding of the underlying biology of autism to directly improve the quality of life for individuals in the autistic community. And that really is the ultimate goal of our research.